Hey folks, welcome to another episode of ASP.NET Core from Zero to Overkill. In this episode, we won't see too much code, just a little bit, and it should be a rather quick episode, as it will be mostly an introduction to a redesign of the API, the Group Management API, as we are going to improve the internal architecture as we start to add more features. So, in this episode, we'll see the redesign of the, the API architecture. Currently, we are using a traditional layered architecture. I'll sp explain why. But uh, the target is to go to a, a hopefully better architecture. In this case, based on the onion or hexagonal or ports and adapters. Not exactly the same, but the the base principles are i guess the same so we're going with this and it's quite hip in dotnet land right now so we'll take a look at it uh so i'll explain why the redesign uh some notes about this implementation although we won't go into much detail on the code on this episode in the coming episodes as we uh, see the individual parts we will be able to understand everything that's in play and we'll take a look at, at if uh, this redesign is a bit over over engineering or not so the usual plugs if the videos are being useful please consider liking them sharing and leaving feedback uh, the third one is probably the most important but the other ones are also really nice and helped the channel uh, remember that uh, all the the videos have a, a pairing post with the written version and maybe some more info sometimes other times maybe the video has more info it depends uh, for you can reach out to me on twitter or if you prefer there are more contacts on the blog and in my website so with that out of the way let's go not a lot of code but let's go Okay, so let's go back to the topics and let's start by taking a look at the current architecture. So currently we are following the traditional three tier architecture that most of us already know about it. Uh, and we can see here uh, in this blog post, we can see a, a drawing of it. So the typical uh, UI layer or presentation layer in our case is our web application if we take a look here web application then we have the business logic which is where we put all the logic and uh, the data layer which is responsible for the persistent part of our application and then all of them can can interact with an infrastructure component for instance to actually communicate to the database or uh, make HTTP requests, stuff like that. So, this is what we have so far. And I went with this approach because as it's the most traditional and simple, uh, as it wasn't the focus, I wanted to keep it simple on this, in this regard and focus on the rest of the things. But now that we want to continue the application, add more features, it's about time to reorganize this. So to reorganize this, we are going with uh, something akin of the onion architecture or hexagonal architecture, or like I put here, uh, ports and adapters, and also there's clean architecture. So maybe they're not exactly the same, but the core principles are so i'll put them in the same basket even though maybe some people will, will be annoyed but the the core principles are really similar and i think that's the important part so the onion architecture was proposed in this article by jeffrey palermo in 2008 so it's not really new and what he proposed he has here uh, a diagram let me open it, it bigger the zoomed in it's not great but I think we can understand so 
it's called the onion as you can see because it's the layers are a bit different instead of being a stack it's a uh, like this like onion layers and uh, the idea here is that uh, things at the center the, don't know the things outside just the other way around the things outside know the things inside so at the center is this application core which he illustrated with this domain model so the entities uh, and all of that domain services and application services so a bunch of things that do the application logic so this would be like the business logic layer organized in a different way so this would be the core of our application and then instead of stacking up ui uh, on top of this business logic that would call the um, data layer we would have the parts that are basically infrastructure we have here really infrastructure but also tests and user interface so they are all built upon the logic the, the business logic and uh, now you ask so there's no data layer how can we go to the database so the graphic is here the database so the infrastructure is responsible but the centerpiece doesn't know this part so what happens is in the middle we create for instance if we want to access the database we create a repository interface for instance it's an example we create a repository interface in here so over here we create some repository interface but then we implement this interface at the infrastructure level so why that so the, the do domain part the application core can create the interface because it knows its needs so it knows it needs to fetch an item uh, for a given condition it, it knows it needs to to list all the items that exist some, something like that so this is domain logic business logic it knows what it what it know what it needs but it doesn't know how to get it and this will be implemented in this part so this will provide the interface and in here we implement the repository interface so in our case we are using ef core for for now so we would create uh, a repository implementation of the the repository interface that used ef core to go to the database or make uh, an http request to somewhere or find files whatever stuff that that isn't specific to the business logic but mostly a, a, an implementation detail so this is the gist of these architectures be it the onion architecture with the hexagonal architecture uh, ports and adapters uh, for instance this article from Mark Seaman talks about it all being the same and even goes into creating some nice diagrams so maybe the the initial idea and some parts of it are not exactly the same but in from a core principle point of view all of these architectures are pretty much the same and we're going to implement something uh, among these lines even though it's not the primary reason for for this happening one of the main reasons I want to redesign the, the architecture is because normally what ends up happening is something like this we have some services and we put all the logic in the services and we end up with services that have the same basically the same name as the controller and all the same all the same operations i did it in this case like i said to keep it simple and be as everyone is used to but in this case the service is 50 lines because it's basically uh, a create read update and delete it's all it does but we will want to create logic and as soon as we start doing that this class will start to grow 
a lot. And uh, if we go to the web, we go to the controllers and it's a controller with the same operations, just calling the service with the same name. So this part, I, I have no problem. I like the having the controllers with as little logic as possible and we will keep this keep it this way but we will uh, go away with uh, this approach of services which have everything uh, one step at a time so in the next episodes we'll do it and like i said this isn't inherent from this uh, tier the architecture or layered architecture but uh, it's what ends up happening. So we'll take advantage of re-architecting the thing and making some adjustments. So when, if you want to learn more about this architecture from people that know more than me, you can check out things, for example, from uh, Steve Smith, uh, which uses the clean architecture and provides a template so we call it the application core and uh, infrastructure, shared kernel stuff and web. It will be similar to what I'll do, but I'll have some different things because people have different opinions. And just let me check, we are still talking about, yeah. So the rationale for the design, uh, you already seen it, I, uh, I already explained it, I guess. It's basically because I want to make things split in a different way before we we go with more logic. So before more things, ah, oh, and besides this uh, template from Steve Smith, it might be interesting because he also contributed to ASP.NET Core contribute to ASP.NET Core documentation and there is a whoops a shop on web a reference application there's a shop on web and a shop on containers this is the monolith version let's say like that and uh, it follows that architecture application core infrastructure web so we can see this example, it's more, f it's already there. And uh, what I will show is being built. So you can take a look at both what I'm doing and what he's doing. Depends on your preference or maybe you want to see everything. But yeah, so before, so we, I think we got it covered for this, this and this. So let's go about this about this implementation. So what I created here is uh, ignore this project because this is a, a shared project that eventually will go into a NuGet package, but this is for a future episode. That's why it's still here. And what we have here, I created three projects and remember this project separating in project is not mandatory you can just use the same project and use folders it's the same i used it uh, like this in project because i like the separation it's sometimes uh, easier to make sure we don't reference the wrong thing that's the only reason why i do it like this some people don't like <laughs> this approach uh, prefer to put it all in the same to make it easier uh, but I go with this approach. So in this case, we have the domain, which is where services is here. It's empty. That's why it's probably with this. But uh, right now we have no services. So that old school services folder that we had, it's gone. It doesn't mean that there won't be but uh, right now there are not services instead i'm using i'm calling the folder use cases and this is split up again i'm putting everything in different folders and stuff like that probably 
uh, not you don't need to do it and then I'm using mediator to split the use cases so we'll see this in the next episode but basically I have uh, an handler for each command or query and implement the logic for something I don't want to go into much detail right now because it's for the next episode but basically so we have a create command we have a delete we have a get user, uh, get user groups, uh, update groups, details, stuff like that. So instead of having one service with a ton of logic, uh, so instead of having this and then this, not this, this, and this, and this, and this, all in the same service, getting larger and larger we split in use cases so by making it this way in this case I'm splitting into files but you could put every, all of this in the single file I'll show you in a bit an example but uh, I used files so I get the logic here really tidy instead of having a giant file to go through so these are the use cases and are the what I mostly use to replace the services. Instead of one service with tons of things, I have uh, use cases which each use case implements one operation. Uh, then we have some mappings, entities. Right now, because this is for a future episode, these entities are the basic stuff that uh, is usual. So just getters and setters, but this will change the future. We'll make it more object oriented instead of just using this as uh, data bags. But for now, the entities only do this. And then we have a data part. I won't go into much detail, but it's where I'm putting the, the interfaces that the infrastructure layer needs to implement. So we have an I repository here, for instance. I'll go in more in more detail in the future. But in here I put the interfaces that we need. So in the use case implementations, we use these interfaces, which are injected then. So then in infrastructure, right now only have data part. So you see here the F repository implementing the interface I showed. Uh, the DB context, stuff like that. Again, more details in the future, just showing the how this is done. And in the web part, I did a bit of a reorganization, mainly removed the controllers part, and now it's features, groups, so I'll put everything related to the groups in this folder, instead of having uh, stuff from groups in the controllers and stuff on the models, so it's all here and yeah the controller is pretty much the same as it was but instead of calling a service it uses mediator to send the the queries or the or the commands but the rest is mostly the same so this is in terms of architecture uh, or better yet the organization of the project the rest is pretty much the same so we are going to really implementation details in the next episodes but if you want you can already see the code that's there so things will change of course but you can already take a look at what's available on github and if you haven't thought about it until now you will think as soon as you see the code if isn't this over engineering? Well, I guess uh, to some degree, yes. It really depends on the application, I guess, or for s something simple, microservices, maybe too much, uh, but I like the, the separation. And sometimes we see the discussions on Twitter, 
So Steve Smith likes this kind of uh, organization. He proposes it and there is an implementation or on the hp.net core repo, stuff like that. Uh, but for instance, uh, Jimmy Bogart is not a fan. It seems he says it's too much. So he has another another approach which he calls the uh, vertical slice architecture in which instead of having that he slices and puts in the same basket everything from the UI application domain DB everything that's for a specific uh, portion so in our case he would put all the group related stuff in the same place so he, he would minimize, like he said, he says here, minimize coupling between slices and maximize coupling within, so everything within. I understand this point and I like uh, like uh, to some degree that uh, Mediator is from Jimmy Bogart and I have some inspiration, for instance, this doing this kind of separation over here in features groups and having everything here is based on his idea of vertical slice but then I make it more complicated by splitting uh, this into infrastructure and domain and stuff like that so I understand this point of view I prefer the other one but I understand both sides and uh, I, sometimes I get annoyed when I see those dis discussions on, on Twitter some people say, oh, this is wrong, you should do it like this. And the other ones, oh, you should do it like this. It depends, as always in software and in life, everything depends. So I'm trying to get the best, the best of both. Probably you won't get it because I'm more in this camp. But uh, I, I find it useful to, to understand both approaches. That's why... We're going to use something more like this in the in this implementation of the group management API. But as we will have more services, more APIs in the Playball application, we'll probably in other APIs use something like this or or an alternative alternative uh, solution. So we'll try to look at all the points of view. Uh, if I wanted just to evangelize on one thing, I wouldn't, wouldn't be doing the series as I am. So right now we are going to use something like this. In the future we cha will change things. So I guess that's it for here. So over engineer much. It depends maybe if uh, you find that it's too much, you need the, uh, you, you think that the, your team would be better off in something with something sim simpler you can adapt you can use something like this and simplify some bits you can use a much simpler solution you can go with vertical slices you can even stay with the, the layered the traditional layered architecture although with some adjustments i would say that un unless your application just is just uh, create reading, updating and deleting stuff in the database. We sh you shouldn't go with that approach of the services that do just that. Uh, and in that case, I would say kill the services and just do that directly in the controller because if it's just for that, the service isn't doing anything in there. So I, again, I put did things as I did because it's what's more, what people are more used to, but I don't like do, to do it that way. So will change and I think we covered everything uh, this was mostly a talking about stuff uh, episode not really coding or showing code that will change in the next one but I I thought it would be important to do this intro before uh, and I want to really people don't go just with the flow and see ah this is the way to do it or this is the way to do it I, i'm not in the business of telling you how to do it i'm just sharing some ideas and if you like some of them use them if you like them somewhat but 
think some things might be improved, do that. Uh, every project is different, so don't be close-minded. Listen to all ideas and adapt to what makes more sense to your situation. So now I guess that's it. So in this case, go see another video. Thanks for stopping by. See us.